So now let's look at the WYSIWYG editor. So if you want to open up your, um, should we go to our page? Eh, no, let's go, let's go to the content tab and open up your movie or one of your movies. So I'm going to go here to movies. So content search. And then open up one of your movies. I am going to search for my own um, movie, uh, which I think it was Ratatouille. Okay. Yeah. So um, here on Ratatouille, oh, I didn't add a WYSIWYG. Yeah, I purposely kept you. Okay, so instead of going to the uh, movies content type, let's go to generic content. And maybe search, I don't know if you put your own name in your generic content type, but I did. I put Dean in my Dean training home message. So maybe you can find one. Otherwise, you could just add a new piece of generic content if you can't find yours from yesterday. Or, you know what? To, to make it easier, let's go to the site browser. We'll open up our page and we'll edit it from there. So go to your uh, inside. The, go to the site browser. Open up the training folder by clicking the plus sign to the left of the training folder. Hit your folder, and then the one page that's inside that folder called index. Let's open that up. Okay, so I just double clicked on my page. So let's go to this page, and we have in addition to our our movie content. If we go to the edit edit button over here. Make sure you click on edit so you can see your tools. For right now, let's just remove the movie content type or uh, the movie content by clicking X and that doesn't delete it. It just delinks it from this page. Okay. So if you see your movie first, then go ahead and click the X, get rid of it. I'm going to accept and it removal means it's just delinking it from this page. And it says you're just removing it from this page, you know, if I want it back, I just add content, movie content, choose Ratatouille and put it right back, right? But I wanted this one, which yesterday you remember I put the uh, bacon, lorem bacon or bacon ipsum. Bacon. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we want to edit this guy. And uh, so we just click this little pencil icon here. And then that should bring us here, if you remember this from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's cover the rest of the things. What else can you do? All right. Let's click to the upper left-hand side. And let's say we wanted to add a some title or something like that to our page because our webmaster did not want to expose the title to the content in the container, which is actually the case here. And I'll say, um, you know, cake and... Bacon is is great together. <laughs> I'll press enter and then I'll highlight that. Maybe you don't want to give some title. Press enter. I'm going to highlight this and then I'm going to go to format. Make sure you do have your title selected first, right? And then format heading H2, right? And then that gives us our new heading. We could highlight it again and we can click, you know, click center. I really start making the webmasters mad. I'm going to insert a bulleted list and at least, at least we, by default, we disabled tables. Okay. <laughs> so at least we did that. You can put it back, but uh, yeah, we know how much that makes it. webmaster is upset that, you know, their tables should be controlled by CSS and all that good stuff. So, um, so I'll just say, you know, list item one, list item two, blah, blah, blah. If I wanted instead this to be a numbered list, I could just go ahead and highlight here. And then I could go ahead and switch it to a numbered list. And then the styling of these lists actually is picking up the CSS as your webmaster decides that list items should look. So you won't have to worry about styling at all. Select somewhere else, maybe down, way down below your image. Maybe you want to select, I don't know if you have enough text. I gave myself enough text to do this, but I'm going to show another way to add an image. Okay. I personally like the, the, you know, 
add the image, use the clipboard, make sure I'm not, you know, it's not a big hog, you know, image, kind of get it to the right size before I get over here. But there's another way to do it too. So I'm going to down here, maybe to the left of my last paragraph, I'm going to add another image. But this time we're going to use the insert edit image uh, tool, which I'm hovering over. So make sure you place your cursor first, that you're not going to be right bumping it right up against your last image. So I'm clicking insert edit image. Okay. And then I'm going to choose some other image to upload. Now, how do I upload a new image and put it into the source? Is I would then choose this little source icon. I'd have to choose a directory where I want my image to go, which I'm going to go to the training and Dean G and inside of Dean G, I have an images directory. Now I could choose one of the images I already have, or I can click upload new file. I think I'm just going to, you know, we've already seen that work. We already did shape of water that way. So I'm just, I'll, I guess I'll just take that image shape of water and uh, I'll click on it. It puts it in here. It tells me my dimensions are 182 by 268 by default, unless I do some sort of resizing or anything. I can go to advanced. I can put the same space. So I think yesterday we said vertical space like 20 and uh, horizontal space 20 and um, then a border of one or something and click OK. And now I've got that over here. It should still be selected. You should see the little selected dots around it okay so I could then also align this one to the right um, or I can you know click on it again and the way you have to select it is gosh how can I get this guy selected uh, it doesn't want to select for me because it's down here at the end so I'm going to align my shape of water over to the left this time and then I could keep going and add in more stuff and it would respect my padding right and save and publish and now whenever i come back to my page i've got my bulleted list i got my shape of water my bacon <laughs> my bulleted list my title up at the top so what you'd want to do is you would want to go to one of these uh, guys right here load it into your image editor, right? And then get it to the right uh, pixel size. So let me wait for that to load. So we'd want to take this uh, resize here and probably make it like 400. Something like, oh yeah, it's like 4,000. 4, so 400, resize. And that's much better. And then I, I, would, I would click the clip icon, save it. Lock for editing, save and publish. You have to save it in the image editor and then you have to save and publish your content change. If you don't actually save the change to the content, yes, you saved it temporarily in the in the image editor. So the image editor is remembering, but if you just like click the cancel uh, button here, then you didn't do anything to your content at all. Yeah. I just did save and publish though. And so I resampled, resized. And now, you know, whenever I go to place it in... The content so I could place it in Marcus's uh, da, 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 index page right now and that would place obviously much better all right so I could come here to the left of Liberkus I could go ahead and do the clipboard here's his image at 400 then I can select his image and align it to the left or align it to the right I can um, then also go to that clipboard advanced my vertical space 20 horizontal space 20 order one click OK and it looks like he's stuck inside of the P tag here though every once in a while you need a tweak yep he's stuck inside of that same P tag so I would just want to get that image source Control X put him right there maybe right before that p tag text align left so i even have that styling there on the p tag that i just used
Now, what uh, what hopefully your webmasters are also going to do is like for profile content or um, content like our news um, is what they can do is, and you guys don't have to do anything here. You can just watch. Um, they can put an image field, so you don't have to worry about a thing. You just put, you know, your headline of your news, maybe a geolocation of where your news happened in the world. Um, then you go ahead and put your story, which is your WYSIWYG, but you don't drop any images. And then there's an image field after the story, and that's that image will automatically get placed by the webmaster dynamically um, on the content wherever it needs to go. So if we look at this gas price roller coaster on the front end, so let me hit this from the front end. You'll see how that image is automatically being grabbed and resized exactly the same for every piece of news content. So if I go to news and events, uh, where's my gas price roller coaster? He's on another page. Where's gas? There we go. Gas price roller coaster. You can see the image is thumbnailed automatically. So it appears perfect on the listing page. Then if I click, I'm not sure if the detail page actually, yeah. And then the detail page shows the rest of the image at a different resize. So I prefer this method, of course, you know, um, as you know, somebody who's done several different pages, um, uh, you know, this one, my wife couldn't work in Costa Rica until um, uh, her residency came through. So, um, home com so I built her she so I said well you have to form your own company you 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 the only way she could be legally an employee is if she formed her own company was a big percentage owner of her own company and then you know uh, put herself in as the uh, you know a, a majority owner then she could go ahead and start selling real estate so I made this website for her so I'm resizing all of the images of the property she never has to decide about sizing or how something's going to display at all you know um, and then whenever you go to the detail you know it shows the full images and there's a scroller and all that good stuff and there's my wifey there um, you know so uh, you know, I typically, she doesn't have to make one single decision about images. I said, I, you know, the only thing is my uh, width here is 800 pixels on the detail of these properties. So she has to make sure that her, whenever, you know, somebody passes her an image, maybe through an email or something like that, that it can't be a poor quality image that's less than 800 pixels in width. And even though she's not a, a real computer, you know, she's not super computer savvy herself, she can still right click on an image and see how, um, you know, how wide it is in pixels, you know. Um, so, so uh, you know, typically, if the webmaster can not, you know, make the user not even worry about it and overlay, you know, captions and stuff like that automatically via widgets, then why even make you think about it, right? So where that can that can't always be done, but where that can be done, it should be done. Uh, profiles of employees, everything. The user should never have to make a single decision there. Profile pages should look the same for every single employee, right? Image should be a certain size. It should be in a certain place. It should be expected. Otherwise, it's just not knowing proper website management.